There is no excuse for this Kraken team, no excuse for this game, and no excuse for where they're at at this point in the season. They're just bad. What's cracking, everybody, and welcome back to Kraken r, &R where the Seattle Kraken go into Chicago against one of the worst teams in the NHL and lose 4-3 after a three-day break. Now, we all know that it's been a tough start to the season for the Kraken, to say the very least, and I think along the way there have been some fair reasons to point out as to why that could be the case. They've been dealing with injuries all season long, which at this point kind of everyone is, but especially early on, they definitely had more than their fair share. They'd played more games than any other team in the NHL by the Thanksgiving break, and the majority of those were road games, especially early on in the season, playing the vast majority of their games to start the season on the road. Not to mention that as far as the luck of the puck is concerned, they've definitely been on the bad end of that more often than not. However, when it comes to this game, there is absolutely no excuse for this team. They came into it with a three-day break, three days of rest that they had not had yet this season off of the Thanksgiving break right before it, and they get an easy opponent in the Blackhawks on the road to start a road trip so they at least have a chance to get off to a good start. Instead, they come in, lay an egg, look completely flat pretty much until the third period when they are desperate trying to come back from two goals down, and end up blowing entirely, not getting any points out of it whatsoever. And yes, the Blackhawks do have Connor Bedard, and honestly, so far this season, he looks to be as advertised at 18 years old, looks like he not only belongs, but is going to be a superstar just like everyone expected. Has looked pretty much fantastic throughout the season, sure he's had some rookie moments here and there, but yeah, this has been a very good start to his rookie campaign. So it would be one thing then if the Kraken lost because he took over the game. But no, he really didn't touch the puck all that much in this game, really had no effect on it, didn't end up getting on the scoreboard whatsoever, and the Kraken still lost to the rest of this Blackhawks team. So yeah, there are absolutely no excuses for this one. And so, as much as I hate to say it, I will say it again, the Kraken are just bad. Do they have the potential to be good? Yeah, absolutely. Again, this is pretty much the exact same team with just a couple changes on the fourth line and one change defensively that made it to the second round, game seven of the second round of the playoffs last year. So they have every potential in the world to be that same team and maybe even better considering they've had a full extra year now to play together. But instead, so far this season, they've been mostly a sloppy mess out on the ice that has trouble even getting out of its own way, and at least the way they're playing right now, they are just bad. Now sure, I will say that for those of you that are eternally optimistic, the Kraken are still very much in the playoff hunt, they're right around a playoff spot as we speak, and with a little bit of a winning streak could actually take pretty solid hold of one of those wildcard spots. Although, that's pretty much only because the rest of this Western Conference, outside of the top three teams in each division, also seem about as disinterested as the Kraken do in actually going to the playoffs. And to be honest, I try to be optimistic myself, but I still haven't lost all hope for this team this season, largely because of that state of the wildcard teams and how bad this Western Conference looks outside of the top teams in the divisions. But I have to call it like it is right now, even if I still do think that it's there for this team, if they can somehow find a way to pull it together, they show in a couple of games this season that they can be that team that we saw last year, but it's been so horribly inconsistent, not only from game to game, but within every game that, yeah, I just have kind of lost faith that they're going to be able to find a way to rally and pull things together this season at least not in a consistent enough way to make a difference. Now, don't get me wrong, I'd love for the team to prove me wrong about that and go on a bit of a run here and get this thing turned around. Heck, if they were to win, say, the next four games in a row, I'd probably be right back on board and believing that they can make the playoffs this season and be that team that we saw last year. But at least right now, I just don't see that happening. With all of that said, though, if there's any of you optimistic Kraken fans out there that want to try to talk me off the ledge a little bit down in the comments, feel free to do so. But at least for right now, that's kind of where we're at. And let's get on through this disappointing game. Now, I suppose for the Kraken, to be fair, even if I don't think this is an excuse for how the game went, things did not necessarily start off ideally for them even after the three-day break because while they do get Grubauer back and he starts in this one, they do not have Tanev as he's now out day-to-day -day after suffering that big hit in the middle of the ice in that terrible loss to Vancouver on the other end of the three-day break. And so in Tanev's place, the Kraken call up Andrew Podorowski and give him the start in this game in that same spot that Tanev was playing on the second line. That being said, he still does play under eight minutes in this game, so fourth line minutes even if he wasn't playing in that fourth line role for the majority of it. Either way, still not an excuse for how the Kraken played in this game. And actually, one more thing before we get into this game. Coming up for the next game on Thursday, I will be doing a watch-along stream for that game in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. And throwing a little bit of a twist in there because the Seahawks will be playing on Thursday as well against the Cowboys. I thought it would be a fun opportunity to watch the Kraken play against the 
NHL version of the Cowboys or the Seahawks play against the NFL version of the Maple Leafs. You know, both teams are blue and white, get way too much attention from national media, which then ends up pissing off all the other fans that end up hating that team. Plus, they both perennially disappoint their fans in the playoffs and haven't been near a championship in decades. So yeah, basically the same team, just in different sports. Although unfortunately, given how the Seattle teams are playing, it could be a pretty frustrating night against those teams on Thursday, but we'll stream it either way. By the way, that's starting at 3.45 Pacific time, just in time for the start of the Kraken game, and then going all the way through the end of the Seahawks game whenever that finishes. And I do mean the end of the Seahawks game, not whenever it feels like it's virtually over, depending on what the score looks like at the end of the third quarter. So... We'll see how painful that is, but we'll go through the whole thing regardless. Anyway, as for this game in Chicago against the Blackhawks, the Kraken actually do get off to a pretty good start. They get right into Chicago's end of the ice, get set up, and actually create a few good scoring chances, just aren't able to convert on any of them. So they start on time and look like the team that we expected to see throughout the rest of this game. They end up getting a power play out of it, which they don't score on, but also get a couple more shots on goal. However, as that power play comes to an end, the Blackhawks somehow are the ones that come out of it with the momentum, and that's when the Kraken start turning over the puck in their end of the ice. And I mean, they're not the most egregious turnovers in the defensive end like we saw in the inaugural season that would lead to goal after goal. Instead, it's something that we've seen actually a fair amount of this season where the Kraken just go through these periods of half a period or more where they just cannot seem to get the puck out of their end of the ice. They can get it right up to the blue line, but just not ever across it. And sure enough, that's what happens here. The Kraken get hemmed into their own end, and eventually a shot on goal from well out is saved by Grubauer, but he lets up a rebound out to the other side, and it goes right to a Blackhawk who puts it right back into the net past Grubauer. And look, I love Grubauer, and I want desperately for him to succeed here in Seattle and be the goaltender that we saw in the playoffs last season, but this is something we've kind of seen from him throughout his time in Seattle, where he does give up a lot of rebounds and doesn't always have the best control over them. And sure enough, this one goes right off his toe and right to a Blackhawk. And again, no, this goal is definitely not 100% on Grubauer by any stretch of the imagination. Again, the Kraken defensively got themselves into this position by not getting the puck into the neutral zone and at least forcing the Blackhawks to reset, if not transitioning it out the other direction. Plus, any skater when playing defense will say that if the goaltender makes the first stop, it's up to them to make sure there isn't a second opportunity. And Larson tried to do that, but again, this rebound was pretty much kicked out right to the one Blackhawk player standing on the far side of the goal. So obviously not an ideal sequence of events for the Kraken, but as long as they use that as a learning experience and don't allow it to happen again, they should still have no trouble coming away with this win. But instead, less than two minutes later, they let pretty much the same thing happen again. They get immediately hemmed into their end of the ice, fail to get it cleared a couple of times, turning it over by the blue line. And this time, it's a shot from way up by the blue line that comes straight through two Kraken players and past Grubauer into the back of the net to give the Blackhawks the 2 to nothing lead. And this one is definitely one that Grubauer needs to have. Now, sure, Borgen standing right in front of him, kind of screening Grubauer with nobody around him that he's even pretending to keep away from the net definitely doesn't help. And if he's going to stand there, probably at least try to block the puck instead of turning away from it. Either way, this is still a save that Grubauer needs to have, and it's 2 to nothing instead. Luckily for the Kraken, shortly after the second one goes in, they get their second power play of the game, which at least breaks up the momentum for the Blackhawks, and although the Kraken don't score on it, they do towards the end of it turn the momentum back in their favor. And not long after it comes to an end, they manage to get a rush chance back the other way by a bad turnover in the Kraken end of the ice this time by the Blackhawks, that allows McCann to get a rush down the boards, eventually getting it into the offensive end, dropping it for Beneers, and Beneers following McCann in, picks up that puck by the blue line, skates it up to the low faceoff circle, then fires off a shot, which is blocked in front, but it goes right back to Beneers, who takes a second whack at it, and this one does get past Morazic to give Beneers his fourth on the season and get the Kraken back to within one. And coming out of the Beneers goal, the Kraken maintain momentum, get another power play here late in the period, though this one is cut short and not by the Kraken scoring, by McCann heading to the box for a hook, so we go to four on four, the Kraken continue to maintain that momentum until eventually the Blackhawks get their power play towards the end of it. And in that Blackhawks power play, the puck ends up in the back of the net once again. Although this time it's the Blackhawks net as shorthanded Wemberg creates a turnover in the neutral zone off of X Thunderbird, actually Thunderbird from last season, Korchensky. Either way, it turns out good for the Kraken as they get it back to Wemberg in the neutral zone. He carries it to the offensive end and then just dangles with a big hooking motion through that offensive end all through all the Blackhawks players, including Morazic. And after he gets around Morazic, he just slides it into the net to give the Kraken the shorthanded goal and bring them right back 
even with the Blackhawks, it's two to two here in the final seconds. And look, it might not have been the fanciest play from Wenberg or the most highlight reel worthy dangle, but he does go through pretty much the entire Blackhawks team and finds the back of the net. It was a very smooth play by him as he just kind of coasts this big arcing motion and gets around Morazic to get that puck into the net. Either way, the Kraken will take it and somehow, some way, they've managed to get back even here into the first intermission. Unfortunately for the Kraken though, after having battled back in the late stages of the first from that sloppy five minutes in the middle there that got them in that two nothing hole, they come out into the second period and look like they're right back to being that sloppy team that gave up two goals in that middle part of the first. And sure enough, in the second period, they give up two more. The first one comes on a sloppy play this time in the neutral zone, so it doesn't really start in their end of the ice, but it ends up there pretty quick. And this one definitely could have been played a little bit better defensively by Alexiak, who pinches a little bit too far to Borgen's side of the ice. That allows Tyler Johnson from Spokane to get free to the other side. Johnson gets a wide open shot on Grubauer and beats him over the shoulder into the top of the net. Grubauer a little bit too far towards the middle of his net and doesn't get back quickly enough to the far side. Either way, this should not have been that open of a shot for Johnson allowed defensively in the first place. So just bad all around there from the Kraken and they've given the lead right back. And then a few minutes later, after actually getting some shots on goal in the period because the Blackhawks managed to score before the Kraken did that about five minutes into the second, the Blackhawks are back into the Kraken end of the ice. This time a pretty bad turnover in the defensive end leads to a shot wide open right in the slot that Grubauer comes up with a huge save on but the Kraken can't get it cleared once again. Gord does get his stick ripped out of his hands by a Blackhawk player, which goes unnoticed by Wes McCauley and his group of officials who are not known around the NHL for being the best group of officials, but it is what it is. Either way, Gord without a stick isn't able to get to the puck first. The Blackhawks go for a wraparound chance, and I think the guy that was going for a wraparound here was actually trying to complete the wraparound. Instead, it goes off of his stick through the crease to the far side, right to one of his teammates, so it may as well have been a perfect pass. That pass leaves no chance for Grubauer on this one. It's into the back of the net, and it's 4-2 to two Blackhawks. Eventually, the Kraken do have some kind of pushback here late in the third, with a couple of back-to-back -back good shifts that they try to get back to within one, but aren't able to do so. The Blackhawks end up with a power play, which they don't do anything with, so we go to the third with the Kraken down two, and desperately needing their first third-period comeback of the season, coming into the game 0-7-0 when trailing coming into the third. Oh, seven and oh, I mean, I get that you're probably going to lose most of the games that you come into the third period trailing, but to have not won any of seven games or even gotten any of those to overtime. I mean, again, that's just another example of the Kraken finding ways to lose games or at the very least not finding ways to win them like they were doing last season. And for that matter, now it's 0-8-0, so it's gotten even worse. Now, I suppose that does mean that the Kraken are 8-2-5 and five then when entering the third period even or with a lead. But again, that's still 8 wins and 7 losses with either a lead or even coming into the third. So... Needless to say, the third period has not been a strong suit for the Kraken this season. Now, with that being said, I suppose for what it's worth, the Kraken do actually play pretty well in this third period. It's easily their best overall period of the game, and they do at least make things interesting by scoring before the halfway point of the period. And look, if you accept that the Kraken are going to be bad this season, this goal is exactly what you want to see. Because if they are bad, at least for this season anyway, then you just look towards the future and focus on how the young players are playing. And at least on this goal, they played pretty well. It's almost entirely Matty Beneers on this play specifically, as he breaks up a play in the defensive end, then gets it all the way through the neutral zone into the offensive end, drawing all the Blackhawks towards him. So not necessarily played particularly well by the Blackhawks from a defensive perspective, but either way, Beneers gets the puck into the offensive end, up by the corner, and then stops up, fires off a pass to the far side, where Cartier is coming in wide open. He collects that pass, then fires off a shot, which leaks through Morazic, gets through his armpit, trickles into the net, and the Kraken are right to within one. It's 4-3. to three. For Cartier, it's also his fourth of the season, and second in as many games for Beneers, his eighth assist, and the Kraken at least have a chance. However, they aren't able to build any momentum off of it because they immediately send the Blackhawks to another power play, which the Blackhawks don't do anything with. And then the Kraken do start to build momentum again from there, eventually getting another power play of their own. So a good chance now to tie things up here on the power play since they've already come up 0 for 3. You'd think that they'd eventually get one against a Blackhawks team that's been not fantastic on the penalty kill. And then you'd especially think that the Kraken would get one when they get another penalty halfway through it. So they're going to get a minute of five on three. However, the Kraken, even with a timeout after they got that second penalty to go to five on three, aren't able to do anything with these three minutes of power play, including that one minute of two man advantage and then continue to have momentum, but not score through the final couple of minutes. 
and the Blackhawks end up coming away with a 4-3 win. And look, with how this game ended for the Kraken, even if it's reading into things a little bit too much with still 59 games remaining on the season, I couldn't help but notice some potential similarities or maybe metaphor, if you will, between the end of this game and how the season is shaping up for the Kraken. Because the Kraken, even with a bad start, kind of rallied to get themselves back into it, then again went through some trouble there in the second period, but got themselves back into it midway through the third. And then the Blackhawks gave them every chance in the world to tie this game. And heck, if they score at five on three, they still have power play with a chance to take the lead then going into the final few minutes. But the Kraken just wouldn't have any of it, let that opportunity go to waste, and ended up losing this game, which feels a little bit like the opportunity that they have in the standings with how poorly the rest of this Western Conference is playing, at least outside of the top six teams anyway. It feels like a conference that's just trying to give the Kraken a chance to stay in a wild card spot and get back into the playoffs, even if they're, well, if they were in the Eastern Conference, they'd be a bottom two team in either one of those divisions or close to anyway. So that is part of why I've kind of lost a little bit of faith in this game felt like one that could be a turning point in a bad direction. And again, I hope I'm wrong about that and the Kraken can get things turned around and make something of the season, unlike what they were able to do at the end of this game. But at least for now, it seems like the Kraken continue to find ways to lose games and squander opportunities given to them by their opponents. And if they continue to do that over the course of the season, which is kind of the one thing they've done consistently so far, then that's going to show up in the standings as they will squander the opportunity that the standings have provided them to this point. Anyway, beyond that, a couple of other things that I missed through the recap of this game. With that first goal for the Kraken, Grubauer actually ends up with a secondary assist, so he gets his first point of the season and... Color me surprised that it wasn't Decord getting the first goalie point of the season for the Kraken, but Grubauer does get on the scoring sheet, even with a tough game in net for him. And then I think it was towards the end of the second period, there was a bit of a fracas around the Kraken net as Grubauer makes a save and keeps the puck out by freezing it between his legs while lying on his back. So yeah, things have gotten a bit chaotic there. Either way, there's a whistle blown and then a couple of late pokes by Blackhawks players at Grubauer where the puck was, one of which coming in late was Ryan Donato, ex-Kraken obviously from last year, getting his stick, I think, between Grubauer's legs, and Grubauer was not pleased about that. He gets up as the whistle's blown and goes right after Donato. It took him a little bit to get to him as Dumoulin got to Donato first, got him around the head and kind of shuffled him away from the play as everybody kind of came around the net and exchanged pleasantries, if you will. Eventually, though, Grubauer does get to Donato and gives a couple of good shoves at him. Eventually, it seemed like they had words for each other, and I don't know, maybe Donato apologized. He probably knew that it was a little bit too far. It seemed like Grubauer heard what Donato had to say and was like, eh, whatever. But it was a little interesting to see Grubauer go after anybody, but especially a teammate from last year. Anyway, beyond all that, I really don't have that much more to say about this game other than I guess I'm even more frustrated at the team for ruining a game where a goalie got a point. But I guess we might as well get through the Kraken three stars. And if, again, if you want to be a part of helping decide who's the three stars after each one of the Kraken games, you can help support the channel a little bit more than you already are by watching to this point by going to the link down below to Patreon and helping support there. This brought to you by the patrons over there. Again, the only guy that was mentioned over there after a pretty disappointing loss was Matty Beneers. I do think Matty is definitely worthy of a star in this game. He had a fantastic game, gets a goal and an assist and generally played really, really well in this game. Cartier also played well, so I'll give him a star as well, but I mean, maybe that sounds a bit generous giving two stars for a loss to the Blackhawks after three days rest, but the two of them did play well enough, I think, to earn it. Unfortunately, nobody else on the team really did. I mean, the shorthanded goal from Weinberg was kind of nice, but yeah, it was a tough game for the Kraken. With that, though, let me know what you think down in the comment section below, how you're feeling coming into this game against Toronto, which again, I'll be streaming for alongside streaming a Seahawks game. So could be a bit chaotic. We'll see how it goes. Trying something new for the first time. I mean, probably not something that's going to happen a ton since Kraken and Seahawks games don't overlap a ton, but seemed fun to try and we'll see how it goes. Otherwise, if you made it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy this video, the buttons for that kind of stuff down below helps support the channel. And until next time, stay safe out there, be good to each other. God bless. Feel free to join the stream if you want. 345 Pacific on Thursday. And as always, go Kraken.